Good morning, folks. If you feel as though you really understand the material of this channel, today's top story should make you realize what's coming. If not, by the end of the video, I bet you'll know where you can catch up. There are some people, certain people, when they speak about the sun, I listen. Gatherer 314 sent me this yesterday, and I remembered this man and his colleagues when they were one of the few groups who were looking at the weakening solar magnetics, and they predicted a weak cycle at the bottom star compared to the rest of predictions which went up to the top star. Folks, the number one question that has persisted at this channel is whether this is just a solar hiccup or the beginning of another grand minimum and potential ice age. This paper is linked below, but I'll keep the summary short. This is the best solar magnetic modeling we currently possess. Running their dynamo should produce between 24 and 30 grand minima every 11,000 years, or approximately 1,000 solar cycles. The low count puts us 450 years between minimums. The more frequent count indicates only about 366 years between grand minimums. In reality, we have evidence of 27 such minima in the last 1,000 cycles, or 11,000 years, putting us in the exact center of their model, about 407 years between grand minimums. Let's look at the sunspot numbers back to 1600. The weak data on the left is the Maunder Minimum, the last great solar shutdown. This chart gives us the sliver of the 21st century on the right there, so just to the right of that line is 100 years, 200, 300, 400 years puts us at a perfect position to start another one. Folks, this type of interpretation is wholly independent of our daily observations of activity. And remember, experts have also recently confirmed that the sunspots are not living up to their magnetic class. CMEs are weaker. The heliosphere is fading. It now appears that our hard-fought daily diligence is backed up by the data we weren't alive to see. And it happens to have caught the start of a 30-year Pacific cooling cycle. Special presentations on this topic will begin in 2014. Take a few moments to watch the global wind on a flattened earth, going from surface drive up into the lower cloud layers. Pressure systems lose visibility when you get to the jet stream. Finally, we go to the upper atmosphere here. Does it feel like I'm mentioning Europe a lot? They are indeed supposed to be the first place to feel climate extremes. When you look at the wind map wrapped on a sphere, you see how powerful that low is atop the continent. Quarter million without power in France and multiple issues in England. Quick note down under as well, Tropic Watch has changed a bit. Please take note of the likely locations for development both this week and the first week of the new year. Solar flaring kicked a small seed this morning but appears generally weaker. The sunspots facing Earth here are a bit of a magnetic joke actually. No mixing, not even close. Limb regions have the right idea but are too small and spread. Solar wind. Density and speed spiked a few hours ago with density rising again and speed heading under 300. KP shows no disturbance yet with speed never making such a fuss. The sensitive metrics catch it, but a storm is unlikely without further shocks or speed ramps. Corona hole power is high in the departing and backside group, only moderately powerful incoming. The field snapped shut last night, but are popping back open again this morning. As Mercury heads in to conjoin the sun, we've got a trans-equatorial opening on the way. Last but not least, Chapter 3 of Agenda 21 Counter-Strike is posted. I have the link posted in below this video, but if you're new to the Counter-Strike, you'll want to go page by page, bottom links to the next one. We're exposing Agenda 21, but also the aspect of the counter-movement that isn't doing the rest of us any favors. Don't mind saying Chapter 3 should seriously jack your thinking on that situation. Eyes open. No fear at 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.